Hey everybody, John Ramdeen with you here in the FN studios. This is best of five rounds. My good friend Robin Black is away on assignment, so we've decided to take a look at some of Robin's breakdowns. Coming up August 9th, we get to see Meta Morris for some of the best jiu-jitsu practitioners in the world. So we start with a match that went down at Meta Morris 3, the one and only Eddie Bravo taking on Hoyler Gracie. But Eddie Bravo looked simply sensational in this matchup. For all those jujitsu nerds out there that say, you know, this is, this is a system that doesn't really work. You go back to advanced basics. Eddie Bravo looked phenomenal. Yeah. Got the job done with that system. Amazing. We talked about this earlier today. You know, these flat earth society people are crazy. Global <laughs> warming is real. Evolution is a real thing. And Eddie Bravo system works. And I want to take a look at this killer, killer match. One of the great matches in jiu-jitsu history. Eddie Bravo versus Hoyler Gracie, 11 years in the making. What a great match. Right from the beginning, Eddie looks to dive into half guard. People talk about his rubber guard, but he's got this vicious half guard with a beautiful lockdown, and he works a ton of stuff from it. But from this position, it's also a Hoyler Gracie dominant position, the knee slide. So for seven minutes, he's working that knee slide against Eddie Bravo, working it, working it, working it. Eddie gets the lockdown, and kaboom, full on extension of these legs and then extends the other leg up at the top. This is the electric chair submission. The thing is, you're not going to submit Hoyler Gracie with this. You're trying to rip his groin apart. That is as bad as it sounds. You're not going to get it, so what do you do? You come up on top controlling that far leg. Eddie was able to do this repeatedly. Look again. He uses the legs, pendulum sideways, gets underneath his leg and uses to pop out the back and come up with both legs, splitting them right down the middle. A nasty, nasty submission. But Again, you're not getting Hoyler. So all day long with this, he mastered four of these beautiful electric chair sweeps. You come up controlling that leg as well. What do you do? You pass. Eddie Bravo passed Hoyler Gracie's legendary guard. Now look at this. He slides into the back, and this spine crank is nasty. Watch the leg. This leg is some the the uh, showing you that somebody wants to get out quite desperately. And look at his face. That is a spine crank. The spine is being ripped apart. But he was able to shake him off and make this match even more exciting. Hoyler Gracie doing his thing as well. So what does Eddie do? Right back to that electric chair. By now, Gracie's groin is nasty. And look at this right here. He spots a foot. And when Eddie Bravo thinks about the vaporizer, Eddie Bravo's going to hit the vaporizer. So that right there was foreshadowing, looking to go to the back. But here it is. The vaporizer gets it. And it's it, this is nasty. It is part calf crush, part leg lock, and all terrible. You see the pressure inside here. And look at this. There's going to be an S forming in that bone of this leg. It is nasty. This is a complex braid of flesh and bone. And look at this angle. Look at that on the knee right there. That is terrifying. That is going to hurt. He will not be walking today. 99.9% .9 of all human beings on earth would have tapped to that. The great Hoyler Gracie was not one of them. It ended in a draw. But Eddie Bravo is the Man. But your Romero, man, different level. Of course he's a different level. The guy's an Olympian. Yeah, so the wrestling can be an incredibly explosive and dynamic and beautiful thing. There are opportunities to watch wrestling and just see it as the pinnacle of human performance. And we literally saw some of that Saturday night. And I want to look at that in the breakdown. It, this was a lot of fun to look at, man. And there's a couple guys that just look spectacular. You got to start with Khabib the Eagle. And this guy has great power. And you can see it here. That is power against Dos Anjos. But it isn't just power. This guy uses incredible technique as well. Look at this. Yes, power to get him up. But he needs to change the planes of the upper and lower body. And he does it right here. Turn turns you counterclockwise, turns your leg clockwise, puts you to the ground. And he had so many different ways of using his skills. Look at this one. First he throws him, and uh, we'll see this that right there. Puts pressure. It makes him have to back step to defend this. You are now a victim with your feet crossed, going for a ride with the eagle. Almost gets to mount too. But I love this. He can drag you to the mat at any time, and it's going to be hard to resist because he's so skilled in it. You want to impress your friends? Here is the visual cue of when it's going to happen. It's coming up right there. When you 
you see his ear touch the back of his neck or his shoulder, he is now ready to put the whole body together and torque it to the ground using his entire strength. This guy's unbelievably skilled. And on any given night, this would be the best wrestling you saw. But this was best wrestling number two because Yoel Romero, the soldier of God, he's looking up to him right now. Look at this. This is an Olympian. We know what his double leg takedown is like. And he does that whenever he wants. That is unbelievable. But look at this one. We need to take a look right there. He grabs that ankle pick. So he gets the inside trip. And he's got so many ways. The ankle pick, he will complete the takedown with any of five or six ways. Look at this one. This is just not even real. Take a look from over top. And now let's break it down. He goes to the body lock. And it's like a vice. Now he threatens the outside trip. And right here changes it. Looks to the sky. Looks to God. And drives him into the mat. High impact. Unbelievable skill, and he did it one more time for good measure. That is as beautiful, that is the beauty of wrestling as it's used in MMA, and these guys did it unbelievably. It is my great privilege to introduce you to the number one prospect in the world at any weight, the Korean Superboy, that's what he calls himself. This guy's a weird cat, but man, can he fight. Do Ho Choi, and I wanna look at him in the breakdown. And normally I only wear my glasses when we do exceptionally nerdy stuff, but look at this guy. I'll wear him in tribute to this nerd. Uh, pasty body, check. Looks like he's in grade nine, check. Some type of traditional warrior's haircut, check. And a Spock sign, what a weirdo. But man, can this guy fight. Yeah, there's something up there. And dude, haircut, really? I guess I'm one to talk, what are you gonna say? But man, can this kid fight. And the delivery system for his offense is his beautiful striking. And you see the way he moves, he's so incredibly fluid. And he has this beautiful um, uh, fainting game where he makes you respect every movement that he makes. There you see it, look at that. He makes you respond, he gets the flinch reflex going, and then he hits you. Why does his uh, fainting game work so well? Because his striking is so good. Why does his striking work so well? Because his fainting is so good. They work together, his punches are deep, his punches are penetrating, and his punches have power. This is a 23-year-old kid with one punch knockout power at 145 pounds, and he is there to put on a show. I know what you're thinking. The American wrestlers are gonna take this guy down. Well, this kid has phenomenal takedown defense. Look at this sprawl, drives the left hip in, but not only that, he's facing Ashida, a very skilled wrestler, and watch him defend this takedown. My editor, Mark, had to speed it up. It went on for so long. Phenomenal balance against a world-class wrestler. That bodes well for this guy being exciting. And the odd time that he's gonna make an error, take a look at this, he ends up on the bottom. Look at this guy's ability to get back to his feet. Posts up, watch, oh, just so beautiful. Just slides it out like he's not in a fight. Let's look at it again. Posts up, watch the left foot, just ding and pivots out, just, this guy performs like he's not under any pressure and uh, phenomenal skills, phenomenal striking and people are gonna love this guy in the UFC. Ground and pound, vicious. You don't wanna be on the ground with this guy anyways. Why would you take him down? Look what he does to you when you get him there. Ornery and vicious and nasty on the ground. And we see it right there, does he have a chin? Yep, he's got a chin. This guy can take a punch. And uh, look at the high impact here. 23-year-old kid in there with men taking their punches, and he's going to need a chin because maybe his one weakness is his willingness to trade, to get in the pocket and initiate a firefight. He doesn't need to do that. He's so skilled, but he enjoys doing it. And this is going to make him incredibly popular in the UFC. So we got takedown defense. Check. We got an unbelievable fainting game. So let's put him on his back. He's dangerous everywhere. Look at this one, right on the chin. He's got so many skills and watch him push away in mid fall just pushes him off so skilled everywhere incredibly exciting willing to get in and one shot knockout power look at that one we got to see this a couple more times Watch this kid celebrate too. Everything he does is kind of weird. He's a young 23 year old killer and he's an oddball and people are gonna love him one more time. So he hits him with the jab, staggers him. So what do you do? He's so smart, he knows he's gonna shoot here. The second he sees the visual cues, he throws that flying knee and takes out Ashida. Just an incredible, incredible human highlight reel. Do Ho Choi, man, I'm so excited for people to see this guy fight. Don't go anywhere, we have lots more still to come, including the trainer of one of the pound for pound best fighters on the planet and two of the most exciting featherweights in the UFC.